nausea, and decreased O2. This is a 27-year-old postpartum female with a history of lupus who presents with headache, nausea, and decreased mentation. And here are your first images. And here's our question. The location of the abnormality is in the epidural space, the subdural space, the subarachnoid space, the brain parenchyma, or you see no abnormality. And be honest. Okay, very good. Yes, it's in the subarachnoid space. The thing to identify here is that this is actually a flare image, not a T2-weighted image. You can see the CSF is dark in the ventricles. And so all of this bright CSF in the subarachnoid space is all completely abnormal. So possible etiologies of this abnormality include all of the following except meningitis, subarachnoid hemorrhage, dural sinus thrombosis, oxygen supplementation, or white epidermoid. Very good. White epidermoid is the correct answer. And I'm not getting the next slide. Oh, uh, there we go. Um, and that's because white epidermoid is a localized neoplasm. And obviously, this is a diffuse process throughout the subarachnoid space. And uh, let's take a look at these different conditions. So these are post-GAD images on our patient. And you can see the diffuse enhancement of the meninges. And this was infectious meningitis. And in particular, it was listeria in this postpartum patient. Um, subarachnoid hemorrhage can also be bright on flare in the subarachnoid space. This is a post-trauma patient. We can see the shear injury here in the corpus callosum. And if you look in the sulci, you can see this intrinsic bright signal from the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Dural sinus thrombosis can also do this. This is a patient with a thrombus in the uh, left transverse sinus and kind of subtle, but if you look very closely here, you can certainly see the high signal within the sulci. This is due to the um, uh, engorged collateral peel vessels. Oxygen supplementation can also do it. This was a patient who was uh, given prop propofol anesthesia and also given 100% inspired oxygen. That inspired oxygen changes the T1 of the CSF, and so the inversion pulse no longer sats it out. And here, again, in the subarachnoid space, we can see these areas of high signal. And lastly, the correct answer was white epidermoid. Again, this is a localized neoplasm. This happens to be one in the posterior fossa here, a little low down around the medulla. And what's interesting about white epidermoid is that it's intrinsically bright on T1, unlike the usual characteristics of an epidermoid, which is low on T1. And that's because there's a slightly high triglyceride content in this rare variant. And this is a good one to remember. Actually, I got asked a question on my CAQ exam, which referred to this entity. So it's a good one to know about. Okay, case number three. 21.